Hi, this is Zach with Warden Wound. Today I'll be taking a look at the Smith's Everest, uh, which is actually a watch manufactured by TimeFactors.com. Um, this is an interesting watch. It's actually a kind of a combination of homages. So uh, there's kind of an homage in name and then an homage in style. So Smith's Everest refers to the fact that uh, when uh, Sir Hilary uh, Edmund and Tensing, you know, climbed Mount Everest in 1953, that they had with them a uh, Smith's Deluxe watch, I believe it was called. Uh, but they also more famously had with them a, a Rolex Explorer, which is kind of the watch that is, you know, most attributed to being, you know, first worn up uh, Mount Everest. So this watch has the name of one brand and then the look of the more famous watch. So the styling is actually that of a Rolex Explorer. But the watch itself, this uh, Time Factors reissue, um, is uh, kind of actually very different from the original Explorer. It's much larger, it's much beefier, and I kind of feel like that the style of the watch works best when kind of actually really worn as its own thing with sort of a vintage style. You know, obviously you know where the looks came from, but the feeling of the watch, it's, it's, it's different, it's bulkier, um, and it's, you know, otherwise just a very nicely made watch at a very uh, good price. It's, um, it comes in at around $280. That's doing some like, you know, subtraction of uh, VAT tax and things like that. But for that, you're getting a Miyota 9015 automatic movement, uh, really good case construction, you know, bracelet, um, and just really good looks. So uh, let's take a closer look. The case of the Smith's Everest takes uh, in a lot of styling cues from the original uh, Rolex Explorer, which has a kind of the classic Rolex oyster case, but really beefs it up and enlarges it, making it you know much more contemporary and bulky watch. So this actually has a diameter of 40 millimeters. Uh, it's about 49.8 uh, millimeters lug to lug, uh, 22 millimeter lug width, and then it's 14.5 millimeters tall, um, and that is uh, including this uh, domed acrylic crystal here. So the case design, you know, it's actually, it's a really nice case design, you know, the, the whole, the Rolex kind of oyster style is very elegant, it's, but at the same time sporty. And, you know, like I said, this takes and kind of inflates everything. And I think honestly kind of takes on its own character because of that. So, you know, the shape of it is fairly classic, you know, the kind of these long slender lugs coming off of a cylindrical uh, shape here with a polished bezel. But things get interesting when you look at the watch from the side. So the whole case side is actually rounded in this very fluid way. So it has a very liquid shape to the side. And those sides are actually polished, whereas the top surfaces of these lugs here are brushed. So you have a nice little bit of contrast there. Um, and then also keeping with the original style, these do have uh, drilled lugs, which is actually great. It makes it changing straps actually much, much easier than having to just dig through the back. Uh, the crown here, it's a screw down crown. It's seven millimeters, so it's very easy to grasp. I think it's also working with the proportions of the watch pretty well. Uh, flipping the watch over now, it's a very simple case back with just kind of deeply molded in uh, some text about it. So, you know, the water resistance is 100 meters. Um, and on the Time Factors website, this is actually has a reference number of PRS25. Uh, otherwise, it's a, you know, like I said, there's not much going on there. You can't see the movement through it. Uh, yeah, the styling overall, you know, I think it's, it's very interesting, it's very different from the original, and it has, like I said, its own feeling, and that's largely, I think, actually the thickness that's going on here. So on the original cases, they really kind of taper to a fine point, but this is really quite thick there. So in the end, it's really kind of robust and strong, uh, but it still has kind of an interesting vintage look to it, despite being 40 millimeters, and I think a lot of that is actually from this really high domed mineral, uh, domed sap, sorry, domed acrylic crystal. Um, but overall, I think it comes together quite nicely and, you know, simply is very cool looking. The dial of the Smith's Everest is very clearly um, also inspired by uh, the Rolex Explorer 1. Uh, you know, like the reference 1016, you know, has a very iconic dial, just called an Explorer dial. Usually whenever you see um, a watch with this kind of 369 uh, layout with a triangle there, it's often called like an Explorer style. Um, and this, you know, I, like I said, it's, it's very close to it, but there's actually some significant changes that give it kind of a... A little bit of a funkiness, but it still, you know, gets the idea across. So, you know, as you can see here, like I said, it has that classic style, these big rectangular markers and, uh, you know, large kind of uh, 369 numerals, but, you know, an interesting kind of slender font there that keeps it very elegant. But what really kind of makes it slightly different, a little bit strange, are these very, very long white uh, markers around the side for minutes uh, and seconds. They're a bit exaggerated, uh, so there's kind of a feeling of sort of like this inner dial being a little small and kind of close to the center. You kind of get used to it, and honestly, with like kind of the distortion that's coming from the acrylic crystal, you know, the kind of the extra room you have from those uh, white lines 
keeps the distortion really just to that white line area. So it does kind of actually add to the legibility of it. But you know, I don't know if it's quite as aesthetically pleasing as having had that center go all the way out. Um, nevertheless, you know, well executed dial all around. Um, Smith's here just below 12 and kind of, you know, large caps. And then Everest is actually in a contrasting uh, kind of gloss black on the matte black dial, which is interesting touch. It's very subtle. Um, in fact, you can, you can barely see it, you know, until you notice it for the first time. Uh, and then actually just below six here, it says Great Britain. Smith's uh, was, a, you know, is a British uh, brand that I think, you know, went under and how Time Factors owns the Smith's name. So, you know, it does give homage to the classic, uh, kind of their British heritage there. And the handset has a, you know, classic Mercedes handset here. So the Mercedes hour hand, a long kind of fence post uh, minute hand, and then like a lollipop seconds hand. Once again, though, because the dial is kind of pulling in here, those hands do feel a little proportionally small to the overall size of the watch. Uh, the watch does feature loom on uh, all the markers on the inner circle, as well as uh, the hands here, and it's C3 Super Luminova that does glow uh, quite nicely. On the wrist, the Smith Evidence has a kind of, you know, very nice sporty uh, presence to it. Uh, the larger, you know, kind of 40 millimeter size here is actually really nice size, generally speaking, I think for um, kind of a more robust kind of a sport watch. But, uh, you know, compared to, you know, original Explorers, which are, you know, I believe around 35 millimeters, you know, this thing's really beefy and bulky, whereas those are kind of like slender and uh, svelte. You know, this is, this is chunky and a lot more, it's kind of much more aggressive because of that. Uh, nevertheless, the fit, you know, is still, uh, is, it's not like an oversized watch at all. In fact, the 49.8 millimeter lug to lug here, I think sits really nicely on the wrist. Uh, the kind of fluid shape of it too, um, you know, makes it, I don't know, honestly feel, I think a little bit thinner than 14.5 millimeters as everything just kind of, you know, smoothly kind of wraps around and, you know, these edges here, there's, they're not really sharp and the sides are not slab. So it just, you know, it's kind of elegant and like I said, fluid is, is just the word that keeps coming to mind. Uh, legibility of the watch is fantastic. You know, it's, it's, it's very easy to read. Everything's very clearly presented. Um, you know, and overall, yeah, it just, it has this interesting vintage modern look going for it. Um, and, you know, when I was wearing the watch, you know, I kind of was thinking, you know, you can think of, you know, what, what is it a, an homage watch like? And I feel like this watch, it's, it's best worn as its own thing. It's best worn as this watch that has these elements to it, but really is its own kind of character. And then, you know, it's, you kind of get more into the beefiness of it and the, you know, the bulk of this, of this new design. The watch comes uh, with this uh, actually very nicely constructed bracelet, which, uh, you know, I think once again for the price of this watch, it being under $300 is a really great addition. Uh, the lugs here are 22 millimeters, so, you know, it starts at 22 millimeters, tapers to, uh, I believe, about 20. Um, it's uh, brushed evenly, very actually thick links here, solid end links, uh, very tall solid end links that also don't come off when you take the spring bars out. They are attached through a screw here. The, uh, you resize the bracelet with, um, uh, it's double-sided screws, so you need two screwdrivers, but that isn't too hard to do. Uh, and yeah, I mean, just overall very nice, uh, very simple clasp here with the Smith's logo. Um, I do think though that this gives it, you know, even more of a kind of a bulky look to it as this is kind of like very heavy and there's a lot of metal here. So I did like to wear this watch on a leather strap, which I'll show you now. When you put the Smith Everest on a uh, leather strap, I think it actually kind of evens out some of the uh, proportional kind of issues that uh, I had with it before, where there was just a lot of metal and maybe the dial felt a little small. Now everything feels a little bit better. The lugs are more defined and, uh, you know, the leather strap actually also kind of then also brings out some more of the kind of retro qualities to it. So this is, uh, we actually have it on a crown and buckle uh, shipyard strap here, which has kind of a, you know, a vintagey texture to it and a, um, kind of, you know, these uh, off-white threads here that, like I said, they kind of work with the uh, vintage look of the watch um, and as well as the kind of sporty, casual styling of it. So, you know, I think this is just a really nice way to, you know, kind of up the look of the watch a little bit um, and just a nice alternative to the very substantial bracelet that the watch already comes with. I uh, couldn't show this watch without also putting it on a uh, green NATO here. Uh, I feel like this uh, styling, you know, is much more aggressive and sporty than the uh, bracelet and leather. And it's just, you know, once again, a really uh, cool option. You know, I actually think the green here looks really nice with the loom and the kind of, you know, aggressive look of a NATO brings out some of the sharper angles in the case. So this is just another viable way to wear the watch.
the Smith's Everest comes with this really nice uh, leather-bound travel case that has zip shut. Uh, you open this up and you have a bunch of different compartments here. Uh, you know, one side with this cutout, it comes with actually the Time Factors branded pen. It's like this little kind of protective barrier, international guarantee card, a nice little Time Factors polishing cloth, and then of course the watch itself. Uh, these little containers here have elastic bands which will keep the watch very secure. It's great that you could put a second watch in here. This is a really compact, a useful traveling case to have, so it really ups the value of the watch. So to wrap up, the Smith's Everest is a uh, cool, very wearable, very well-built uh, homage watch that I feel like is best worn not really as an homage watch, but as a watch in the style of these classic watches. Um, but it's really kind of its own unique thing that's, uh, you know, kind of more interesting, I think, is a contemporary watch with retro styling and, you know, knowing really what it's, what it's talking about, where those uh, looks came from, just kind of builds the story of the watch. And actually having the name Smith's on the dial uh, goes a long way, too, because Smith's is a classic British watch band, and it's cool to have um, that name, you know, present on your watch now. Uh, I think one of the best things about this watch, really, though, is the value of it all. It's very well made. It has a Miyota 9015 automatic movement in it, which is a movement we love. It has a really solidly built bracelet. It comes with a great, you know, travel pack. Um, and it comes in at, you know, after a little bit of conversion, around $300, which is just a remarkable price for an automatic of this quality. Uh, so, yeah, if you like the kind of Explorer look, uh, if you're interested in the history of this, if you just like the look of this watch, I think, you know, you'll be very, very satisfied with it. Uh, please read the full review on warnandwound.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, and Tumblr.